Oh no, right now I'm looking at something really awful. I'm looking at a public GitHub repository that exposes API keys. And this should never happen. There are a couple of ways to prevent this from happening. You can use Rails application credentials or env variables. Now, in another video, we explore how we can use Rails application credentials, but now we are going to take another approach. We are going to use env variables. So what is this? Basically, at the moment in device RB, we have our credentials exposed visibly publicly. And instead, they're going to be masked under something like this. So instead of just exposing the GitHub ID, they're going to say env and GitHub ID. And we're going to store this GitHub ID somewhere in our application. And to do this, we are going to also use the gem, the gem named .env rails. And let's see how this actually works. So first of all, we are going to go to our application. And quite often when browsing legacy Rails applications, you can see this env, something on the env. And how can you use it? Well, basically, we would go to our root of our application. So I will go to the root folder. And I will create a .env file. So a new file, .env. And inside this env file, I would uh, include a GitHub ID. So let's say GitHub ID equals one to three. And let's see if I can access this. I will type Rails console and try to call env GitHub ID like this. And you see it gives nil. And to make it actually work, we will need to add this gem .env Rails. So we are taking this gem and we're going to add it not only for development and test, but for production also. So we're adding it to our gem file like this and running bundle. And one more thing we need to do in our application to actually make it work is require it in our application.rb. So we're going to go to config application.rb and here on the bundler above the initialization of our application, we're going to add this line .env real type load and this should load this dot uh, env now let's type our rail server and let's call env github id and you see it works so the application knows that it can find a dot env file and inside it digs for the github id and let's also let's say uh, change this github id so we will add our real uh, github id i will go to all of github i'll take this id and place it here. Now let's call it once again. And you see it still doesn't show. It is because whenever we change something, we should restart uh, our server or our console. So once again, I try and you see it has changed. So it works well. Now let's uh, add the .env for GitHub secret. So we will say GitHub secret equals, and we will generate a client secret. So I will go and generate a new client secret. Here it is, I will copy it and add it here, okay. And we will also make this GitHub secret visible here in our uh, device instead of uh, this. So we will say env GitHub secret like this. And now both uh, GitHub ID and GitHub secret should be available through the .env. So let's just check, I'll type Rails console and also look for GitHub secret. And here it is. And that's basically how this gem works. But now let's just pro check if it actually works both in production and in development. So first, of course, in development, I'm going to log out and once again, try to sign in with GitHub. And you see it works. So the application uh, understands that we are using environmental variables. It knows how to find them from the .env file and uh, how to dig them. Now let's uh, commit our changes. So I will type git status and you see, this is something not nice. <laughs> we shouldn't be able to see our .env changes just visible like this. We should uh, not publish them to GitHub. We should git ignore them. So I have a folder named git. I will go to info, exclude, and here I would add .env to exclude it from pushing to GitHub. So I'll say git status, okay. And here are the changes that we have done. We have uh, added the gem in our gem file. We have required it in our application RB. And yes, for Google, let's actually also use environmental variables. So instead of this, we will have uh, git uh, Google ID. And instead of this, we'll have Google secret. Let's just do it. I will say Google ID equals this one and Google secret 
equals this one. Like this. And here in our device RB, we are also going to say M for Google secret and uh, M Google ID like this. So this way we should be able to dig to all the four credentials. And now let's push our changes to Heroku and see if it works. Okay, so I have pushed the changes to Heroku and here you see I have an application running on Heroku and I'm going to try to sign in with GitHub. And you see it gives me an error. Well, first of all, it gives me the error because uh, most likely in our OAuth app on GitHub, we're using the URL for our development, not for production. So I'm going to replace the URL with this Heroku URL. I'm going to go here and I'm going to do the same for the authorization callback URL. So like this. Now I'm going to update the application and try once again. I'm pressing sign in with GitHub and we still get this 404 unauthorized page. Interesting. Now, this time it should be because we declared these end of variables locally, but we did not communicate them to Heroku. So Heroku cannot just find a GitHub application with an ID that is nil. And we're going to communicate this to, Git, uh, to Heroku. Now, there are two ways of doing this. First, you can go to settings of your application, then reveal config variables, and here you will be able to say GitHub ID, and you would add the value here. And the second way is to do it through the console. So inside the console, you would say uh, Heroku config set, and you would copy, let's say, the GitHub secret. Okay, it must have been copied. So if I refresh the settings, I will expect to see both the GitHub ID and GitHub secret. I'll reveal config variables and here we see GitHub ID and GitHub secret. So it seems to work. Now let's see if the application actually works. I will go back to the application, try to reload the page because whenever we change uh, anything in our config variables, uh, the Heroku app kind of uh, resets, restarts. So let's see, I will press sign in with GitHub and it worked. So basically this .env is uh, an alternative to using Rails credentials. And uh, one of the visible changes is that uh, if you're using Rails credentials just to Heroku, you would only tell the Rails master key. And uh, in this option, you tell the uh, names of the keys and values of all your credentials separately to Heroku, and they can be quite a lot uh, in the long term. So both approaches uh, are good for different occasions. And I hope you liked the video. Goodbye.